Over the course of the COVID-19 pandemic, the rapid development of vaccines and treatments were just a few of the many medical breakthroughs that we saw. As technology continues to become increasingly digitalized, connected and data-driven, medicine and healthcare is becoming more and more precise, predictive, preventive and personalized. We speak with medical innovators today to discuss how their state-of-the-art solutions are transforming people's lives. I'm joined by Almog Ali Raz, the co-founder and CEO of Corneat Vision, an ophthalmic medical device company in Israel that became the first in the world to successfully carry out a cornea implant using the synthetic tissue that they developed, restoring a blind patient's vision. We also connect with Brian Cho, Senior Managing Director of E8, which uses computational fluid dynamics to track health conditions, predict and monitor the flow of diseases and heart disorders like heart disorders and even the spread of COVID-19 in enclosed spaces with their 3D simulations. Very warm welcome to both of you. Thank you for joining us today. And well, Almog, let's start with you first. Your company develops synthetic, uh, synthetic implants for severe eye conditions. And earlier this year in January, the world was in awe when your technology enabled a 78 year old patient to actually regain his vision 10 years after his cornea was impaired. And your company said it was a relatively simple procedure, but of course they do say that simplicity is what's genius. So please walk us through how this works. All right, when you look at the, the animation of the, the implantation procedure, it's really easy to, uh, to explain. The cornea is the front window of the eye. It is basically a lens and uh, it's responsible for 70% of the eye's optical power. And just like any other lens, it needs to be spherical and transparent for us. Uh, to be able to see. Uh, the way we uh, do the uh, implantation is that we take out the sick part of the cornea, which is not transparent anymore, and replace it with a synthetic lens. Now, the main challenge with uh, developing such a solution is how to connect the lens to the live human tissue and make it last forever. And we do that using a very special material we developed that uh, mimics the what is called the extracellular matrix. And when implanted, our cells actually go through that material without triggering uh, an immune system response. We uh, surround our, our uh, lens with that material and implant it uh, between the layers of the eye wall and our biology actually do the integration for us. The surgical procedure takes about 30 to 45 minutes and we already performed three implantations here in Israel and we will shortly be expanding the clinical trial to other uh, countries as well. And by the way, this will also uh, reach Korea as we just uh, sign up our first agreement with a Korean company toward the introduction of this device uh, to your country. Well, that's very exciting indeed. And I can't believe it takes less than an hour just to have your vision re restored to you after 10 years of blindness. That's incredible. And well, Alma, what really inspired you to develop uh, your K-Pro um, tissue? And how did you manage to really achieve this life-changing technology? So uh, like many other uh, innovation, this uh, started by a coincidence. Uh, my partner, which is uh, Dr. Gilad Litvin, was exposed to this uh, chemical engineering technology. And he's an ophthalmologist. Uh, and those two worlds usually don't connect. And uh, uh, once uh, he realized that uh, you know, this special material can actually be uh, embedded in our own body, he started to develop all sorts of ideas uh, to solve unmet needs in the ophthalmic space. Uh, when he presented that to me, Gilad is a close friend of mine, I was really uh, intrigued and amazed uh, because of the, uh, the huge uh, pain that this can uh, address, the social impact and the business potential of this solution uh, is what uh, actually uh, you know, triggered my, my interest and I joined uh, forces with Gilad uh, establishing uh, Cornet Vision. Uh, it took us about a year to actually uh, create a prototype and implant it in an animal and the results were just uh, amazing. Uh, and from there it took off and, uh, you know, here we are. Right, and your clinical tests actually began last year on human beings and it's incredible how fast you've progressed since then. And well, now Brian, your company in South Korea, you developed an artificial intelligence based simulation program that uses fluid an analysis to monitor and evaluate uh, health ir irregularities as well as the flow of diseases 
like the spread of COVID-19 in a cafe, for instance. So how does your technology work and what's different about your approach compared to the other health analytics solutions that we have? Well, recently uh, there has been increasing interest in uh, medical images such as uh, CT, uh, MRI, uh, X-ray, uh, the embedding with the uh, machine learning technology. Uh, the other companies just focus on uh, specific disease with this uh, medical image uh, and with the machine learning uh, algorithm technology. However, uh, we are different. Uh, we maybe you know the first step is is similar to uh, other companies. Uh, however, we incorporating with the simulation technology, uh, so you know we can have uh, you know accurate data, uh, and also we can predict uh, the clinical uh, decision uh, going forward uh, with the simulation technology. Uh, recently. Uh, we have done uh, many uh, clinical uh, trial for uh, this, you know, blood vessel uh, disease, uh, and then it also uh, comes out with the, you know, very, you know, positive uh, the results. All right, and your technology is actually already in use by the uh, bio industry here in South Korea. In which areas um, can your model, your NFLOW model, currently be applied and? How do you expect it to really help doctors in their diagnosis and also later in predictive medicine? Well, actually, the, we are specialized in the uh, uh, blood vessel simulation, uh, especially in the cardiovascular disease, uh, which we know as uh, the CVD. Uh, the best way to prevent uh, cardiovascular disease is constant uh, monitoring and accurate prognosis. Uh, because CVD uh, has no symptom, uh, it is hard to detect. Uh, so, the, uh, by utilizing uh, the patient's uh, biometric data, uh, by simulating uh, and then also digitalizing the flow in the blood vessel, uh, it can make uh, for doctor to have better and quicker uh, clinical decision. Uh, I'll briefly introduce, uh, explain the, what the M-Flow uh, Bio is. M-Flow Bio uh, is assist uh, prognosis and diagnosis uh, by simulating and digitalizing the uh, flow in the blood vessel. Right, and over the course of the pandemic, it's been very, it's been uh, critical for these technologies to develop because while most of the attention is on uh, the coronavirus situation and the patients that have arisen from this pandemic, we still have these, uh, you know, these chronic diseases, these terrible um, situations where patients cannot uh, get the medical attention that they need, especially implants. And Alma, we don't really, of course, we don't really tend to think of our eyesight or blindness when it comes to COVID-19. But how has the pandemic affected those with corneal blindness? So for the patients themselves, I, I just, uh, you know, th these patients rely not on vision, but rather on touch and on the hearing. Um, so uh, I, I assume that lockdown significantly impacts the lives of uh, the blind people. Uh, I don't envy that situation. In terms of developing uh, our solution, it did uh, delay significantly our clinical trial. Uh, but from the market perspective, the pandemic significantly decreased the availability of corneal tissue uh, for the current uh, uh, in transplantations. And many eye banks around the world, uh, you know, are you know suffering from uh, an extreme uh, shortage uh, of cornea. Uh, this is mainly because of the fact that the cornea is, is a tissue that is infected uh, by COVID-19, and there are actually no apparent existing solution for testing uh, the corneal tissue. Uh, the regulation significantly changed and imposes a new test and actually investigations that needs to be done uh, before harvesting uh, any tissue. So uh, that has been uh, uh, disastrous. From our perspective, some of our suppliers are abroad and we cannot visit them anymore. Uh, we have a manufacturing facility in the UK, which we are trying to engineer from remote, uh, and that has uh, delayed our operations somewhat. Uh, I think that now we overcame these uh, challenges and. Uh, we hope to uh, 
you know, be back and uh, accelerate our activities. Um, at least here in Israel, the pandemic is, uh, you know, showing signs of uh, disappearance. Right, and it overcomes existing challenges as well, because in some cases, implants, although you get one, it doesn't really, um, your body doesn't respond well to it. But with these synthetic tissues that you developed, then there's a higher success, uh, there's a high yeah, probability the, the, of success. And well, how do you yeah, really the, um, plan to expand the use of your technology? I mean, what is your vision at, um, in going forward? Yeah, our core platform technology enables dozens of applications in many fields of medicine. We actually have uh, new implants uh, outside the field of ophthalmology. If you think about it, what we are able to achieve is the ability to bio-integrate synthetic materials with live human tissue for life. Uh, we also have a solution that enables us to conceal other existing implants and maybe in the future sensors and hide them from the immune system. And there are other applications like uh, soft tissue repair and permanent reinforcement, as well as membrane that can serve as walls between the different compartments uh, of our body. There's just an unimaginable uh, uh, lineup of uh, potential solutions in the fields of uh, plastic surgery, uh, gynecology, uh, orthopedics, and others. So uh, in terms of our IP, it is expanding these days to cover more and more future applications of the same core platform technology. Today, we have four implants uh, under development and two in clinical trials. Very exciting. And just the beginning of the transformation this is going to bring to people's lives. Well, Brian, now, um, in the post-pandemic world, our lives are expected to become more and more digitalized and connected. And well, governments around the world, they're aiming to build smart cities that really integrates all these different elements of um, people's lives into our devices and wearables and so forth. How will your technology also become part of this lifestyle? How are you responding to this also increased demand for uh, digital health solutions? Well, actually, the, uh, we're trying to uh, be, uh, get this more uh, solution for the, and then also the, uh, the better, uh, get this, you know, better for uh, benefits uh, for this uh, reduction cost and time. And the, also we, uh, they deliver the higher accuracy uh, for better uh, clinical decision. Uh, for the cost to the uh, you know doctor's decision support, uh, because the patients doesn't need to uh, actually uh, have a unnecessary treatment. Uh, also, uh, with our the solution to have uh, save the time, uh, patients you know actually doesn't need to uh, visit the less uh, the uh, hospital, uh, so you can eliminate the you know redundant of treatment. Uh, well, that, that's, that's about it and going forward. Right, so um, really it can reduce wait time in hospitals and really help do doctors make critical decisions, so really guiding their response. So it's really, ben so it's really going to benefit uh, both mm. patients and doctors to have this uh, 3D simulation technology um, working at hospitals. And well, lastly, in the post-pandemic world now, we're looking at uh, smart cities and all these digital so solutions surrounding us, Brian. So. Does your company intend to become part of that lifestyle with your technology? No, well, well, the, during the you know COVID nineteen, uh, our life has been uh, changed uh, for uh, safer and better. Uh, you know, post COVID nineteen, uh, we expect that the digital twin uh, will come to our lives faster than our expectation. Uh, ultimate goal for uh, digital twin uh, technology, uh, we're trying to have. Uh, sustainability uh, for uh, better and healthier life uh, through the, the simulation and AI technology. Uh, for example, uh, if it can predict uh, flood and landslide, uh, and also the uh, water management through the uh, digital twin and simulation technology, uh, so we can prevent uh, natural disaster. Uh, so it will change our life better. Uh, so you know, we will continue uh, to have, uh, you know, digitalization, uh, simulation, and presenting uh, our the uh, flow of the physical world going forward. Right, so not only 
uh, responding to the health challenges, but human security in general is part of uh, city life. And well, this is where we'll have to end our interview today. But that was Almog Ali Raz, co-founder and CEO of Core Neat Vision, and Brian Cho, Senior Managing Director of E8. Thank you both so much for your time. Thank, thank you. you. And to our viewers, as always, thank you very much for watching.